In the heart of the Cold War, a secret program was born where the U.S. government conducted human experiments on its own citizens. If you've never heard of MKUltra, you're not alone. That's because this program is so controversial, so shocking, that its very existence was denied for decades. So, buckle up and get your popcorn ready, because we're about to enter the dark and disturbing world of Project MKUltra. From 1953 to 1973, the CIA ran a covert operation known as Project MKUltra. Its goal was to develop mind control techniques that could be used against enemies during war. This consisted of developing techniques and identifying drugs that could be used to weaken enemies or force confessions. So, under the guise of scientific research, the CIA conducted a series of unethical experiments. Unwitting citizens were subjected to various testing methods, including the administration of drugs and chemicals, electroshocks, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, isolation, and verbal and sexual abuse. It's important to note that MKUltra was born out of a prior CIA program, known as Project Artichoke. The goal of Project Artichoke was to determine if a person could be involuntarily made to perform an attempted assassination. An agency memo from January of 1952 asked, quote, can we get control of an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will and even against fundamental laws of nature, such as self-preservation? Project MKUltra was also highly influenced by similar projects undertaken in Nazi concentration camps, where torturous experiments were conducted on living humans. In fact, it was later revealed that the CIA secretly recruited those same Nazi torturers. And they even brought them to the United States to teach CIA officers how to administer certain drugs and chemical weapons during human experiments. These illegal experiments were conducted on unwitting American and Canadian citizens. The experiments attempted to force confessions through brainwashing and psychological torture. But the ultimate goal was to completely erase someone's mind and then turn that person into a spy for the U.S. government. One of the primary techniques used was the covert administration of high doses of psychoactive drugs, especially LSD. The LSD was mostly administered to mental patients, prisoners, drug addicts, and prostitutes. As one agency officer put it, the focus was on, quote, people who could not fight back. In one case, LSD was given to a mental patient for 174 days in a row. The project even included administering LSD to CIA employees, military personnel, and others, often without their knowledge or consent. This was especially true of any CIA employee or U.S. military person who was suspected of being a spy. After being given the drug, they would then be interrogated and threatened with more LSD until they revealed their secrets. Military personnel who received the mind-altering drugs were even threatened with court-martials if they told anyone about the experiments. In a sub-project named Operation Midnight Climax, the CIA set up several brothels in the San Francisco area. Prostitutes would lure men back to the brothels, where they were dosed with LSD. The prostitutes, who had been trained by the CIA, would then ask the men a series of questions, with the goal of getting the men to give up their darkest secrets and other information. The rooms were equipped with one-way mirrors, and the sessions would also be filmed for further study. If the CIA happened to come across a heroin addict, they would be bribed into taking LSD with offers of more heroin. The subjects of MK Ultra experiments were often left permanently scarred, both physically and mentally. It's important to note that although many of the experiments were performed on unwitting citizens who couldn't fight back, some of the experiments were voluntary. However, researchers often misled or outright lied to the test subjects about the purpose of the experiments or the substances that were being put into their bodies. Two well-known individuals who willingly signed up for MK Ultra research projects were the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski and mob boss Whitey Bulger. While a student at Harvard, the Unabomber participated in a study that claimed to be exploring the effects of stress on the human psyche. However, the subjects weren't told that the procedures they were about to undergo were designed to control an enemy's mind. These experiments lasted for almost three years. It's difficult to know the long-lasting impact of psychological torture and if it could have somehow led to the Unabomber killings. However, it's likely that it didn't help what was already a fragile young man. Meanwhile, Whitey Bulger told the story that while he was in prison, he willingly signed up for an experiment aimed at finding a cure for schizophrenia. In return, he would receive a lighter sentence. Bulger claims that as part of the experiment, he was given LSD every day for over a year. 
The darkest chapter in the MK Ultra saga probably revolves around the death of Frank Olson. Olson was a scientist who was involved in the highest levels of the MK Ultra program. It's been reported that Olson witnessed multiple torture sessions in international CIA safe houses. During these sessions, people were interrogated to death using experimental methods combining drugs, hypnosis, and torture. Eventually, Olson expressed grievances with the project and had even discussed quitting. Then, during a CIA retreat at a hotel, Olson fell to his death from the 10th floor of his hotel room. At first, the death was ruled a suicide. But as the years went on, more evidence was released showing that Olson was likely murdered. Olson's family filed a wrongful death lawsuit, and the government paid them a settlement worth about $3.8 million in today's dollars. The family also received a personal apology from President Gerald Ford. One of the other consequences of MKUltra was the introduction of LSD into American society. Prior to MKUltra, the drug wasn't really found in the United States, and some people believe that MKUltra played an important role in the entire counterculture and hippie movement of the 1960s and 70s. In fact, many well-known purveyors of the counterculture movement got their first ever doses of LSD from an MKUltra project. Project MKUltra also attempted to produce a truth serum. It also investigated using sonic weapons to completely erase someone's memory. In 1964, the project started looking into the development and testing of using biological, chemical, and radioactive weapons to incapacitate foreign agents. As a reminder, the goal here was to find drugs that would bring out deep confessions or wipe a subject's mind clean, with the ability to then control their mind. Targets included foreign leaders and other important officials. Memos specifically mentioned schemes to drug Fidel Castro and suspected Soviet spies. So, how was all of this allowed to take place? Well, despite the fact humans often do terrible things, this was a time of high paranoia in the U.S. government and the CIA. The U.S. was no longer the only country with nuclear weapons, and fear of communism was at an all-time high. American POWs had returned home from war, and many appeared to have been brainwashed into repeating communist ideologies. This led the CIA to wonder if the enemy was somehow using mind control techniques. So, in response, the CIA started MKUltra, hoping to develop the same technology. Intelligence officials were also becoming increasingly concerned with spies and moles within the U.S. government. Therefore, the agency poured millions of dollars into these studies, and the projects were obviously very important. It can only be assumed that intelligence officials felt that mind control could be the key to global world power. Project MKUltra was officially halted in 1973. At that time, the CIA director ordered nearly all documents regarding the project to be destroyed. One year later, in 1974, the New York Times ran an article alleging that the CIA had conducted illegal domestic activities, including experiments on U.S. citizens. This led to investigations by the U.S. Congress, which concluded that the allegations were, in fact, true. However, with most of the documents related to MKUltra destroyed, it's unlikely that we'll ever know the full truth. In the aftermath of the revelations, the CIA faced a storm of public outrage and legal actions. Yet, despite the scandal, no one was ever held criminally responsible for the atrocities committed under the banner of Project MKUltra. It did, however, lead to President Gerald Ford issuing an executive order which prohibited human experimentation without informed consent. Project MKUltra remains one of the darkest chapters in the history of the CIA, a chilling reminder of the lengths that governments can go to in the name of national security. As we delve deeper into this story, we are often left with more questions than answers. What other secrets remain hidden in the shadows of our past? We would love to hear what you think. Please leave your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, we would appreciate a quick click on that subscribe button. That way, you can stay up to date when we release our next video about one of the most interesting things in the world. In the meantime, stay safe out there and keep exploring.